Den's gone full rock and roll, and it's all down to Mancunian pals Steve Warren and Andy Wilson, who are hoping to win over the Dragons with their music-based concept. I had this idea of being able to create the soundtrack to your life. Dream a dream all day, forever staring at the sun. When people use it, it will uplift them, it will take them back perhaps to a different time or place. We really believe our product will bring people together and make them feel much better about themselves. So come on, come on, come on. Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> New oasis. Thank you for that fantastic introduction from Northern Uproar, a classic Manchester band. Thank you. Yeah. Well done, guys. Hi, Dragons. I'm Andy. And I'm Steve. We're from Manchester and we're proud of our musical heritage. We're part of a team that has created a brand new, exciting social media app for music lovers and it's called Songhive. We've come here today for us for £150,000 for 15% of this amazing app. We know there's a lot of negativity at the moment regarding social media. But when social media started, it was all about discovering, connecting and sharing. And that's what we want to bring back again, using the power of music. Our app will allow musicians and music lovers to directly connect and share their love of music across the world. It will also be a profitable business. We'll use the app to collect data about the fans and we'll use that data to sell advertising space we forecast that we'll be moving from 600 people to thousands and after two years to 17 million. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We now welcome any questions you may have. An upbeat pitch from music mad Mancunians Andy Wilson and Steve Warren. They're offering 15% of their music focused social media app in return for £150,000. And it seems that their proposition has chimed with music fan Tej Lalvani. Steve and Andy, hi. Hello. It's great to hear a music app coming out of Manchester because one of my favourite bands, Oasis, is from Manchester. So, you got my attention, but I just want to understand really what the app does. The essence of the app is to interact with fans of like-minded music genres without the distractions of what we call dogs, cats and dinners. Instagram, Facebook, they're scrapbooks of people's lives. Songhive is going to be the soundtrack to people's lives. So is this an idea or is this something that you've already created? We've already prototyped the app and it's been flowed out to a test audience, about 600 people, roughly. And when did you launch it? About 18 months ago. And you've got 600 only? Yes, because it's not been advertised, we haven't promoted it through Instagram or anything like Why that. Why haven't you? Because we know the app's not quite ready yet. Some of the feedback that we got, they said that they want to stay in the app for uploading music, for downloading music, and be able to play some soundtracks that people suggest. And that will require a bespoke app, rather than what we have now, which will require more investment, which is what we're looking for here. The entrepreneurs reveal their music-centred app is far from the finished article. And it appears Peter Jones is wondering how this concept differs from other social media platforms. I'm still trying to understand really what it is you're trying to do. Is it a copy of Instagram, basically, but focusing purely on music? So you're posting your own entries onto this. I've just been to a concert. But I can do that today on Instagram. You can, but I think we're different because it's about people sharing positive experiences. And I know people who've actually come off social media because of the negativity that, that can be perpetuated on some of those platforms. But you can't control people's opinions and you're still not coming up with a business model that changes that. Unless you can tell me that you have agreed with at least a hundred of the world's top bands, they will exclusively use your app. I don't think you've got a business. When this reaches a certain critical mass, I think some bands would do that. No, but I think that's the bit you have to start with first, so that ultimately other users will be forced to join. Because if I want to know what's going on with you 2 if I want to know what's going on with Justin Bieber, they are only on Songhive. There's a bit of a chicken and egg situation there, really, because you've got to have the app to draw those people in. No, what? I'm telling you to go and get the chicken. If we weren't living in these uncertain times of COVID, what we intend to do 
is to reach out to new bands and give new bands a platform. That's wonderful, that's wonderful, and get those new bands signed up. Otherwise, I can tell you, people will just go on Instagram. They will not sign up here. Peter Jones raises his concerns that the USP of the music concept simply isn't strong enough. Sarah Davies now wants to focus on the pair's punchy predictions for the take-up of their album. So, you made a lovely big bold statement. 17 million users in two years. So you just walk me through what you're going to spend on getting there and what the revenue's going to look like as well. Uh... Well, if I take you forward two years, it's about 1.2 million. Give us the breakdown, though. It's about 800,000 at the end of year one, 1. 1.2 million at the end of year two. 17 million users with a revenue of 1. 1.2 million. 1.2 million, based on estimates of what we think we'll get from advertising. Yeah, so just tell me what your expenditure's going to be and what your net profit's going to be. Expenditure's... Uh... <sighs> the expenditure isn't huge. We're, we're looking at a small team of administration uh, people. Just the numbers is fine. Uh... <sighs> I can't give you all the details year by year, unfortunately. Unless you can recall them, Andy? Not off the top of my head, no. You can't tell me what it's going to cost to get them 17 million users? It's, it's around uh, half a million pounds altogether. You do understand that Facebook and Instagram and all these people ran at billions and billions of losses for years... Yes, they did. ..while they, they built did. a customer base. Yeah. To yeah. then have something that they could monetize with advertisers. I get where you're coming from. I just think you're so naive to think that you're going to make no, over not. a million in revenue we're and not. have 17 million users without spending any significant money. We know we've got to do little steps before we can build up the app to the critical mass that we want. And we can do that. Our original plan was to start that in Manchester. Manchester's a great brand in itself. It is, but mid, I think you're on a different planet. Sarah Davies uncovers a major gap in the pair's understanding of the finances needed to build a digital platform. And Tuka Suleiman wants to know more about their business backgrounds. And then Steve. Hi. Are you a pair of dreamers? Or have you got experience in the digital world? We don't have experience in this area. We don't? No. I'm an engineer by background. I have bought and sold businesses in engineering. And Andy? Uh, my background's engineering. Engineering. Here we've got a couple of guys who are in engineering who've got no knowledge of digital. We're very well connected in the music industry. These guys are friends of ours, Northern Uproar, which is why they're here supporting yeah, us. But yeah, but guys, you have not demonstrated any sort of strategy. I'm just going back to what Sarah just said. This is going to cost millions. Are you both still in employment? Yep. Yes. Right. Currently, yeah. So I want you to keep on dreaming, but do not give up your day job, because this is not going to put food on the table for you, and I'm not going to contribute to food on the table. So on that basis, guys, I'm not going to invest them out. The music app hits a bum note with Tuka Suleiman, and he becomes the first dragon to exit the discussion. And it appears Deborah Meaden has some reservations following a previous app adventure. Quite a while ago, in the den, a business called My Dish came in. It was a platform where people could come in, share their favourite recipes, talk about their grandma's best banana cake. It was Facebook for foodies. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? £100,000 I put into that, and it didn't work. We got a load of users, but they were kind of transient people who moved through and moved on but we couldn't get the data that would say to an advertiser, this is worth a look. So you can hear where I'm going. I won't be investing, I'm out. I'm going to be a bit blunt here. You guys are not from the music industry. You don't have a tech background, and that's what you need for something like this. I can feel your passion and wanting to do something for this industry. But I'm telling you, it's not this, because you haven't proved anything. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. Guys, there's nothing that you've 
shown me today that makes me believe you have the acumen to drive this forward. So I definitely won't be investing, and I'm out. Sarah Davies isn't harmonising with the music app offering, and she becomes the fourth dragon to exit the stage. Only Peter Jones remains. Does he see any money-making potential in the pair's business? I would suggest you don't spend a penny on this app at this stage, but go and take the concept to a few agents and sign up the big bands first. Give them a share in the company. And all of a sudden, I think you might get traction here because I don't think it's completely wrong, your concept, but you need the chicken first to produce the egg. So, as I stand today, I'm unable to invest, so I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you, ladies and Thank gentlemen. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The entrepreneurs' pleas for investment have fallen on deaf ears, and Peter Jones sends them packing. Steve and Andy exit the den without a deal, but still with plenty of northern grit. We're from Manchester and we've got a Manchester Resolver bouncers. We're not going to be put off by this. I really hope some of it got through to them. Plan B. Plan B. There's somebody out there who wants to invest in Songhive. The entrepreneurs may have departed, but back in the den, there's a new financial five piece ready to rock. Good evening, everybody. We are called the Dragons. <laughs> Here we go. What on earth have I done? I'm with a bunch of amateurs. First to face Theo and the other investors is Tony McNally from Northumbria. And if he's half as accomplished in business as he is as a musician, Tony's enterprise could be music to the dragon's ears. I play dozens of instruments, violin, mandolin, ukulele, guitar, bagpipes. Fiddle. Do you want me to stop? The product Tony is hoping to snare a dragon with today is something that's bound to bring a smile to one fire breather's face in particular. Hello, Tej. Look at that drum kit. Tej <laughs> is absolutely itching. Itching to get up. He saw them and he went to put his book down and then realised he's got to wait. My training product is 21st century. It's ready to go global on a much bigger scale than it is at present. What a beautiful time to play some drums. Hiya, um, my name's Tony McNally, and this is my wonderful invention called the Tone Alley. And I'm looking for an investment for £50,000 for a 10% share in the business. Let me demonstrate just a little further, if I may. So, this is the first to train the trajectory of the drumstick. Training all the correct muscle groups so that you can play without tension. Because tension is the enemy of movement. Dom Famularo, drumming's global ambassador, said, in a hundred years of modern drumming, how come no one has thought about doing this before? A training aid which helps you learn the actual instrument. <laughs> <laughs> and it is education where that's the main market for this. If each primary school in England alone were to purchase enough for one classroom, one per two student, on an average class size of 28, I would make £16,448,320. Um, who would like to have a try? He's your man. All right. It's an entertaining pitch from Tony McNally. Would you like to try something that you would normally play? who's offering to hand over 10% of his company. That produces a teaching device to help drummers learn correct hand movement and vertical stick control. 
boom, ja, da, da, boom, ja, and just look at your leg, da, da, boom, ja. And maybe it can concentrate yeah. on what your feet are doing. In return, Tony's seeking a £50,000 investment. Hey. Tuka Suleiman is first to try and find out if his musical offering could be a sound investment. Well done. Ah. Uh, oh. Tony McNally. Yes. You're having fun. I am having fun. It's brilliant. Before we go any further, yeah. I just want to know a little bit more about you. I learned to play drums on my mother's drum kit. By the age of seven, I was working with the family show band, doing two or three gigs a week in the smoky clubs. Then I went on to be a session musician, uh, toured in support bands for Nick Kershaw, to Pow the Blow Monkeys. Music is in your blood. It is, yeah. Right, OK. I'm not into this end of the music, but yes. it does not deter me from making an investment if it's a viable business. That's good to go, I'm glad. So this little gadget, what, what does it cost you to manufacture? This one is £30. And uh, sells for? It sells for £124.99. Right. So let's get some numbers going. Let, let's see if we're, we're, you're going to get an investment. OK. So give us the last three years of trading. What have you done? OK, turnover altogether for the past three years. Collectively. But can we break that down year by year, see if there's a trend? I haven't got a breakdown. I've got a breakdown for the, the whole three years, I'm afraid. Um, I'm OK, what is that? Give us that. It's 83,000. And then gross profit? First year was a loss of 9,600. Second year um, was 1,260-something. Uh, loss? Uh, no, profit. Profit, yeah. But a humble profit at that. Right, OK. But I must add Tuka here. This is without education, and I give you a figure, which was 16,448,320 pounds. It's, it's funny how certain numbers, yes. you are very precise. When it comes to your turnover, profit and growth, you are very... That's what I pay the accountant for. Um, he's the numbers man, and I, I'm the creative force. Tuka Suleiman discovers Tony is a whiz with sticks, but less of a force when it comes to some of his figures. Tej Lalvani now wants to know why the entrepreneur's percussion product has failed to drum up much business so far. Tony, look, you've done a cumulative sales of 83,000. Yeah. Why have you only sold so few? Well, marketing is what I need. I need expertise. For three years, I've been going around the globe. I've went to, to Nam three times, which is the biggest trade show on the planet, finding accommodation, flights, all the rest of it, going there. And I'm hoping a dragon will help me with that. Online sales, whatever, Amazon, Craigie. Are you on Amazon? I'm not, no. But why not? Because I don't really know how to do it. I'm... But a dragon's not going to come and teach you how to use Amazon. You're telling me you've been at this for three years and you haven't even tried to go on Amazon once. I'm a bit of chicken to, to take that leap into that because it's not my bag. It's not... Tony, you're not a chicken. You're far from a chicken. You've been round the world going to trade shows, <laughs> booking <laughs> hotels, booking flights, you're absolutely doing the right, business. Yeah. yeah. You're far from a chicken. You're a go-getter. Theo Pafitis tries to rouse the self-deprecating drummer, who so far has been a bit backwards in pushing his business. Sarah Davies shares Tony's northeast roots, and she wants to find out more about his plans to roll out his percussion training tool to schools. E hey, Tony, you're dead, canny. Oh, thank you. I want to dig into yep. your idea and education. How much money did you say you were going to make? Sixteen million four hundred and forty-eight thousand three hundred and twenty. How many schools yep. is that? Sixteen thousand seven hundred and eighty-four. And how many of them have drum kits in the school? Probably half. That I find flabbergasting. Because we didn't have a drum kit in my school when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm just trying to look at the size and scale of the market because yeah. there was the potential to sell that many in education. Yeah. Honestly, I'm pretty sure you might be have five of us fighting over this one. There is the potential. Percussion is a big part of the primary curriculum. And I know it works, if I may point out. Nobody's going to poke themselves in the eye. The focusing on the small, tiny target area, it keeps the focus, keeps the focus. 
I get what you're saying, yeah. but honestly, £125 yeah. for one of these... OK, can I stop it, you there just for a second? Well, if you're well what was I going to say? Oh, sorry. I thought, no, 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 get to, I can't wait. You tell me what oh, I was going to say. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you were going to say it was too much. I was. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So it's too much. I, do you play golf? No. Do you play tennis? No. Do you play polo? No. Oh. <laughs> But what I was actually going to say yep. is I'm not talking yep. about me, yep. I'm talking about schools. OK, I'm not charging £125. I base my figures on £70 uh, educational price for the 16700 Tony, Tony, I I've got a school supply business yes. and I can't tell you how hard it is to sell to them at the moment. I right. know it is. They are strapped for cash. OK, if you remotely... Field, let's, look, let's look at this for a moment. We, we will. No, 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 you've got to listen to me for all a right, moment. OK, OK. Because you've done all the talking so far. Sorry. Right, so... This so is my product. The, the, it is your product, and it's wonderful that like, you're passionate. But there's a difference between being passionate about it... OK. ..and also being realistic. I know when you're learning, it's not all about fun. You have to stick to the discipline. Oh, hang on just a so, second, guys. Look, so, this is oh, fun. Oh, no, no, not a prison. But, but listen... Sorry. I think the product is an ingenious product, but it doesn't feel like it's a business. Sadly, I won't be investing, so, Tony, I'm out. Theo Pafitis isn't in sync with the drumming entrepreneur and becomes the first dragon to pass on the percussion proposal. Next, the dragon that loves to drum, Tej Lalvani. Tony, I think as an instrument to learn from as a kid, I think it feels quite restrictive. Best it's, percussion teaching tool. It's, it's true, but... Best teaching tool for beginner students to international awards. True. Like, it, now, Tony, it, Tony, it's, Tony. Sorry. <laughs> I get your passion about it. Sorry. But here's where I'm at. Unfortunately, from the last three years, you haven't been able to show that the market was really demanding something like this and is able to sell. So, I'm out, but I wish you the best. OK, thank you. Tony, you've invented a Kraken product. Thank you. You are one of the most enthusiastic, passionate people I've met in my time in the den. But it's not an investable proposition today. I'm out. Thank you very much. Tony McNally. Tuga. When you do something that you're really passionate about, it's a pleasure. Yeah. For you. However, I say to myself, wake up, look at the business. Mm -hmm. This is a business for you mm -hmm. to grow, to tick along and tick along. It's your business. Yeah. I'm going to wish you all the best, but I'm going to say I'm out. Tuka Suleiman's business brain moves to the beat of a different drum and he becomes the fourth dragon out. Only Deborah Meaden remains. Is she ready to rock and roll with an offer? Tony, your enthusiasm is extremely contagious. Yeah. Which means walking through life with everybody saying to you, it's brilliant, it's fantastic, can lead you into thinking that you have got something that is bigger than you actually have. So I'm afraid I am not convinced, but I'm not going to say those two words without a drum roll. So if you don't mind. <laughs> is this a drum roll to see you out? I have never been able to say those two words with a drum roll. I'm out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for being a good sport. It's not a problem. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Good luck. Hope good it works out. Tony. Tony, the drumming dynamo, has drawn a blank. And he leaves empty-handed. Ah. <laughs> oh, well, that was fun. I gave it my all. I tried to convince him that this is a viable business. Mm. My product is the best teaching tool on the planet. It's a shame it didn't work out um, for them. Oi, oi, hi. We can do this. We make it playful, it's fun. It's yeah, fun. let's have fun. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Let's have fun. We're both absolutely passionate about music. <laughs> 
we understood that the act of making music only a few people can do it. So we were like, how can we make this something that everybody can do? I think it's some sort of uh, ball. Musical balls. Musical, yeah. The musical mutineers have a clear idea of who they'd like to assist them on their quest. Peter Jones, we see that he has experience with distribution of other products everywhere in the world. And also Steven, he has a lot of experience with social media. And for what we are doing, is very important. So the ideal would be that we get a little bit of both of those. Hello, everyone. My name is Pasquale, and this is Nathan. Hi. And we're here today to offer 4% of shares in our company for £100,000 investment. So what we are doing is that we are creating a suite of hardware and digital products uh, to make creating and playing with music uh, something that everybody can do. And our first uh, product is Oddball that kind of looks like a regular ball, right? But the cool thing about Oddball is that when you bounce it, it makes music. So if I've got cymbals loaded, for instance, if I just play it a little bit, you can hear that I can really control the intensity of how hard I hit that. And say, for instance, if uh, I can use melodic instruments, I can control the note as well. Which we think is pretty cool. That is cool. Oh, sorry. We, sorry, we poker face, poker face. A, we actually have a video of one of our favourite users that, yes. is, that is really good with it. Yeah. So we started this adventure uh, with a crowdfunding campaign. We raised £220,000. Uh, once the product was ready, we started selling it to our e-commerce store. And since then, we generated an additional £250,000 in revenue. What we'd like to do now is invite a couple of you guys up to uh, have a play with Oddball, and we'd love to see how you have a play, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Pasquale Pio Totaro and Nathan Webb are hoping to gain investment with their novel approach to making music. So let's play, let's play the, uh, okay. the track and get you going. They're asking for £100,000 in exchange for 4% of their business. <laughs> That's pretty good. Their claim that their product makes making music easy has been substantiated by the Dragon's demonstration. Oh, yeah! But it seems to be more fun for the participators than the spectators. Oh, hey, man! Sit down! Let's <laughs> crack on! <laughs> oh, he wins! Oh, he wins! Oh, very good. <laughs> With a bit more practice, Peter Jones and Stephen Bartlett might make modern-day Mozarts. But for now, they make way for Tuka Suleiman, who wants to explore the origins of the innovative instrument. Great pitch. And Thanks. really, I want to go back to your journey of how you came about it, who's the brains behind it. So we, so we both um, met at the Royal College of Art, right. where we were studying uh, product design together. So this actually started off as a, um, as a college project, and it's kind of steamrolled from there. So, as it stands now, right. have you got an IP? Yes. yes. So right now, we've got accepted patents in Italy and the US. Well. And what is it uh, retail for? 80, 89 pounds. And you've sold 350,000 pounds worth? Uh, uh, since in the last seven months. So how many are you selling each month at the moment? Last month, how many did you sell so last this month? Last month, we have sold about 900. What does that equate to in revenue? Uh, it's about uh, 80K. Oh, you've done well. Yeah, yeah, we're, um, we're, we've worked hard. A unique and protected business with healthy sales appears to be music to the investors' ears. Stephen Bartlett, one half of the entrepreneur's target dragon duo, got down with the product, but he wants to know if the product will get down with the kids. There was a word you said twice when you started your pitch, which was the word cool. <laughs> And I've seen so many products in my career that fit into the cool category, but don't also fit into the commercial opportunity category at the same time. Mm. And you can see something, it can be cool, but then it can be a gimmick and a fad and it can fizzle out. Right. Yep. How does this become a business with longevity? 
It's, it's an interesting question. Uh, so, so the thing about Odd Boys, uh, it's much more than just a musical device. We really see it as innovating the way that normal people consume music. So right now you can sort of either really listen to music or you can be a pro musician. There's no in-between ground and we find that, that kind of ground really the place that we want to fill. And we think that this could really actually be a cultural movement. And how, what's your marketing strategy? How are people discovering it for the first time? Mainly, I think, Ads. through digital marketing. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Facebook, TikTok. Yeah, it makes perfect sense for TikTok specifically yeah. because it's visually compelling. That will drive organic sales of people just through curiosity. And we were all curious when we saw it. We were really excited to see your video, which I thought wasn't very good, actually. Thank God me and Peter stepped up and did what we did, oh, because honestly... Peter, Peter honestly, nailed it, I have to say. Even your app, your app was like 5 out of 10. For such yeah, a cool did. visual product, it was really quite ugly we, and dated. We're, we're very aware of that. We're constantly evolving the app, and we are going to give the UI a bit of a, a spring clean and, uh, and, and sort of make it more fun. The entrepreneurs acknowledge that they need to retune their tech. Now Deborah Meaden wants to learn more about the duo and their dynamic. What do you like to work with you two guys? Ah. Uh, what would you say about him? Go on. <laughs> no, no, I think um, he's very, very good on detail. He's not only a details man, though, he can also think creatively. What's so rubbish about him? Ah, oh, he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I am no, a pain in the ass. <laughs> I am a pain in the ass. Uh, the, what's, what's rubbish about him? Uh, he wants to say it, he just can't get it out. He yeah, just, he yeah. just, oh, now's your moment, come on. I would say, if I can yeah, say... Yeah, why don't you say it? I can it say it, that I'm, I'm just it. very direct when I have to give... Yeah, OK, that's what I was going to say. What's gonna bad say. about that? It works, yeah. it works, it works. And same, same thing? <laughs> I think when you're looking at how things communicate to an audience, he's really good at it. Uh, in terms of, like, the negative thing, uh, let me think about it. Hang on. Like, no, uh, so uh, there, is, there is a reason I ask, because at the end of the day, this will start stand or fail on you guys. Right. This is a story that has to be told mm -hmm. because nobody's out there Googling, I'm looking for balls that can help me make music. Yeah. You know, is it? So, so it's really important right, right. the way, A, the skills that you have within you, mm. but also the way you work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. for us, that's, really, that's a really important part of success. I didn't get to say the bad thing about him. <laughs> hey, oh, he's got it. He's, he he's wants desperate. to say it. He is desperate to say it. There's a singular, though, at least, wasn't it? Say it. No, no, we moved on. We moved on. <laughs> Guys, I'll tell you um, where I'm at. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I think you two have presented exceptionally well. I think it's a great product. Honestly, I can't really fault you. So I'm sat here thinking, well, I should want to make a, an offer then, shouldn't I? All right. And I think that the only thing that's stopping us is it's just not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I'm really excited to take this home and try it. The musical balls fail to bounce with Sarah Davis, and she decides to step away from the investment opportunity. And it appears that Peter Jones, the second half of the entrepreneur's preferred Dragon's Double Act, is also struggling with the idea. With this, I have to go with my instinct. Um, and it's really weird because there's a connected parts of me. I wrote down the people we're currently working with and the level of influence of where this could go. Um, you know, and it does help having a contact with the head of Universal. It does help having a very good contact with the head of Amazon. But then I'm just sitting and really struggling with it. Um, Indecisive, very indecisive. Yeah, it's a real, honestly, it's a real tough one. All right. It's tough. How much did you come in asking for? I didn't write it down, I was... 4%. 4%. Ugh, yuck. Because this could well just be a Facebook ad business. And I genuinely deeply believe that the thing that makes it transition from being just something cool people see on Facebook to being something that is part of culture I think that's a really difficult, but possible, but very difficult thing to do. Mm. Requires a certain expertise, an understanding of how to penetrate culture. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's gonna require luck. It's very hard to predict these things. Mm -hmm. I don't think 
it's going to get there. So for that reason, I'm out. All right. Ooh. Okay. Guys, I tell you what, I'm. Um, I might live to regret it, but I'm really sorry. I'm not going to invest. All right. Okay. Um. So, I'm really sorry. I'm going to say that I'm out. A huge blow for Nathan and Pasquale as both of their favoured dragons drop out of the deal. But is Deborah Meaden marching to the beat of a different drum? OK, guys, I um, kind of blew my cover a bit at the beginning when I got all excited and said, that's really cool, we're halfway through your pitch. I love it for lots of reasons. Um, everybody has music in them. They might not know it, yeah. but everybody has music exactly. in them, you know. And I think the route that you take next is going to turn this either into a fad that people buy, use a couple of times, put in a box and think, well, that didn't catch on, or it's going to have credibility. And I mm -hmm. think it's the credibility piece that you really have to tread a careful line on. Mm -hmm. um, but I am going to make you an offer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, I want 10% of the business, mm. or I'm happy to share. OK, thank you. Thanks for the offer. Deborah Meaden makes a play for the business to the tune of 10%, but she's also happy to share the spoils. As the only other dragon not yet out, will Tuka Suleiman be up for a collaboration? You have a very good offer from Deborah. And I know if I made you an offer, I'm going to want more than 10%. So I would give you half the money for 7.5%. Do you want to go talk to the wall? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to, don't yeah, we, really? Yeah, let's do it. Nathan and Pasquale retreat to the wall to talk tactics. OK. Hmm. Deborah Meaden's offered 10% with an option to split her investment with Tuka Suleiman. He's happy to share, but won't go any less than 7.5% each. I think Deborah's offering a better deal. As it stands, all offers are well over the 4% the entrepreneurs initially presented. All right. Yeah, this. Okay. You want to deliver that? Yeah, all right. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. So, what we were talking about is that we are willing to put out 7%, um, and we are also open to the option of two of you sharing. 7%? Yeah. Not me. Uh, not me. OK. Not me. I think you've got, you've, got quite a, you've got quite a job to do. That's good. What can we say? Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I mean, th thanks a lot for your offers, anyway. OK. OK. You've made a mistake, guys, but, hey, good luck. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. See ya. The curtains come down on Pasquale and Nathan's pitch as they refuse the Dragon's terms of investment and leave the den with nothing. Oh, well, plan B. I'm totally shocked. I thought that was an unbelievably good offer. I think that we did the right decision to walk away from the 10% offer. That counter offer was our top line, and I think that it, had we kept eroding that top line, we probably wouldn't have necessarily been happy with what we would have come out with. So you win some, you lose some. I hope they don't live to regret, though, because 10%, 7%, yeah. that could be the difference between success and failure. Success yeah. and failure, yeah. Hey. Next up, an exercise app that promises to shake up the way we work out. Good luck, boys. Getting investment from any other dragons would be huge for us because yeah. it would validate uh, the business and it would mean that we can then take it to the next level, which yeah. is what we're keen to do. But will the dragons be keen to sign up to this innovative business?
Hello Dragons, I'm Dom and this is Matt and we're from Wireless Fitness where our aim is to become the world's biggest brand in outdoor exercise. Using wireless technology and our unique wireless fitness app we've created the concept of doing outdoor exercise classes to music. We're here today to try and raise £100,000 in return for a 15% share in our company. Now with the help of our fabulous instructor Tanya we'd like to demo the equipment but we'd like your help to do so. Would you guys mind wearing a pair of headphones each? Uh, if I put it around that way. There's a volume control on the bottom if that's too loud. Tanya's got yours. The music's on, so do we... Hello, yes. dragons. Can you... I'd love to get you up for a quick and easy workout if you'd love to join us. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Stretching it out already. All right, can we all hear my voice? Good. All right, now bring those feet wide. Good. Weight in the heels, hands up, sit back. Nice, looking good. But now we're gonna add a little twist. Just reach, opposite hand to foot. Warming up through the back, hips, knees and ankles. Well done, thank you very much. You can take a seat and your headphones off. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. The wireless fitness system allows fitness instructors to deliver everyone's favorite music-based exercise classes in any location without disturbing other local residents. The result, a portable exercise studio. We've been trading using the existing system we've just demonstrated for two years now. However, we've taken things one step further by developing the Wireless Fitness app. The app streams the music and the voice of the instructor to the phones of the participants who listen in using their own headphones. The app also processes class payments, allows the instructor to organise their fitness programmes and drives traffic to their classes. We charge an 8% transaction fee on this and on an average class cost of £6, this equates to 48 pence per transaction. With this in mind, we calculate a year three turnover of £4.8 million. We'd like to thank Tanya for her help. We welcome any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A pitch to get the blood pumping from Dom Thorpe and Matt Boyle, who are seeking £100,000 for a 15% share of their outdoor exercise app. But will any of the Dragons think their business is in a good enough shape to invest? Sarah Willingham is first with the questions. Dom, Matt, hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, when you first walked in, you said, we've created the concept of doing outdoor exercise to music, I thought, A up, <laughs> they haven't done that. But I kind of, as it progressed, I get the fact that this is all about, it just all happens within your ears. Absolutely. So what are we investing in? Are we investing in the future of the app or the future of the headphone business? In theory, the future of the app. Well, because... not in theory, because actually you are stood here pitching. So <laughs> in, in, just in reality. Apologies, <laughs> yes. So we're, we're asking you to invest in the app. So for further development, because uh, that's where we see the business going for the future. The, very, the raison d'etre, if I'm being posh, is to make fitness instructors more successful. We've had people running 50, 60 people on Clapham Common in London. 50% had seen a class taken place come up, taking a flyer, and then come back the next week. The instructors can save on marketing costs, and the exposure for brands is potentially massive. We are actually in the process of developing a deal with Zumba, a billion dollar business, I'm sure you know. The beauty of it is that working with us, they instantly have infinitely more locations. They can also have happier instructors who are making more money, working fewer hours, and having bigger classes. Talk of a potential partnership with a global fitness phenomenon could elevate Matt and Dom's business to the big time. But something's not working out for Nick Jenkins. Why would Zumba do business with you when, in fact, they could develop an app that does this? Because they're limited by their own pool of uh, part, uh, instructors. Well, which is a... sorry, sorry. And how big is that? How, how many? How many instructors? Difficult. It's estimated more than hundred thousand. About a hundred thousand. Okay. And yeah. how many instructors have you got? Well, well, there are hundred thousand potential instructors. Uh, but, uh, no, no, seem no, no, to be no, 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 no. Sorry, you said Zumba is limited to its to its limited pool of only a hundred thousand instructors. That's peanuts compared with how many instructors you've got on your books, isn't it? Yes. I mean, they're going to be. They're gonna, I can be chomping at the bit to do this deal, aren't they? Um, so, um, so w w what do you offer Zumba? More exposure. Opportunity no, no, to they don't, You don't offer more exposure. They're no, a do, massive multi-million pound business. How many Zumba classes did you see on the way to work this morning? 
Um, <laughs> well, to be no. honest, I, to be honest, I was looking at my phone the studio. all the way. I didn't, I didn't notice, and it was raining. The traffic that drives to our wireless fitness pilot all came from people seeing classes take place, and an outdoor class is exposed infinitely more than an indoor class. Despite intense interrogation, the entrepreneurial personal trainers are convinced their outdoor model will attract attention and therefore reap rewards. But can its technology stand up to Peter Jones's scrutiny? Where are you with the app at the moment? So what we've got is a skeleton framework which will combine or merge my voice and the music that I'm playing and then stream that uh, via the cloud of 3G to a user's phone. And what happens if I'm not in an area where I've got full 3G coverage? Yeah, that's absolutely a consideration. So the instructors will have to research not only 3G strength or 4G strength, but also surface, location, things yeah. like that. I think this is a major, major flaw for your concept. OK. You're going to have in some areas, and there are, it's very well known, some people will be on an O2 network and it works, some people will have EE and it doesn't. Mm. Some people will be on Vodafone and it works, some people will be on 3 and it doesn't, and they're in the same location. Well, we're talking about the prototype launching the app this year. The full launch of that probably wouldn't be until 2016. Yes, there are black spots at the moment, but that will be worked on to improve coverage. The entrepreneurs have kept their cool so far, but they're now forced to admit that the success of their business hangs on the UK's sometimes patchy network coverage getting significantly better. Does Deborah Meaden think it's a risk worth taking? I don't pretend to be an expert in, in, in this field at all, but I completely understand how this would work. What's put me off is that I'm not particularly technically savvy. Peter is concerned about it. If Peter's concerned about it, I'm concerned about it because he's technologically, he knows a lot more than I do. I just won't be investing, so I'm out. There are parts of this that I really like. What I really like is you offering uh, an independent trainer uh, a mechanism where anybody turning up within the vicinity uh, of their class uh, can press a button and they pay. So you have to pay to play. What do you think, to you, is the lifetime value of a customer, i.e. someone attending that class? Good question. Mm. I don't know the answer to that, but we expect it would be the lifetime value of any customer attending a, an ordinary aerobics uh, class. So. No, 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 because you're only making 48p. So uh, what's your 12-month value? What's the 12-month value of a customer to you? Yeah, uh, I don't know the answer to that, I'm afraid, because we've focused on the revenue at, from the instructor's perspective. Can I tell you where I am? Yeah. Um, I think the platform for personal trainers is very interesting, but I'm afraid you haven't demonstrated that you can make the most of this opportunity yet. Uh, but I hope you do something with it. Thank you. But Thank I'm you. out. Tom, Matt. Hello. Hi, guys. I'm Tuka. You guys look great. You're very presentable. You're probably great trainers. However, I think you should definitely stay with your day job. There's a lot of... I don't know the answer to that. As far as m myself investing in this, You've got more chance of seeing me do the marathon than you've got me investing in that. So, guys, I'm terribly sorry. I'm not going to invest. I'm out. Thank you. Thanks. Rejection from a third dragon. But Sarah Willingham and Peter Jones are still in the game. It's a bit disappointing you didn't come here with the right tech and the understanding of how you're going to implement it, because I might have been interested in this. I don't want to risk £100,000 of my capital, and I think you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, so I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your feedback. Only Sarah Willingham now remains. Can she see past the concerns and invest in the app?
I think it's a really neat idea. Well, actually, what I should say is I think there's a really neat idea in there. OK. This is about trying to get people outside to do classes that doesn't... You can do it with specific people in specific locations at the moment, but there's not a hub, so I completely get that. And I actually think it's going to take a lot of marketing and a lot of spend to get that awareness out there, but there is a model in there. Unfortunately, what you've come here and presented is, is it's way too much of a pond. It's not for me, guys, I'm out. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. No deal for Dom and Matt. As all the dragons agreed, their exercise app has a long way to go before it's ready for investment. What do you think that went? What do you think? Could have been worse. The, the, the amount you'd have to throw in to grow the customer base is colossal. You could throw millions at it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hello, Dragons. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you. What you've just heard is the world's first analog optical guitar cable, and it's called a light lead. My name's Danielle Barnett. I'm David Holmes. And we're here today to ask for £70,000 investment in our company for 20% equity share. I've worked with Danielle for over 20 years. We've managed two top 10 acts and we've toured all over the world. Uh, my cousin was a guitarist in one of these bands and he would always use a copper cable to play his guitar. Said he preferred the sound over wireless or digital systems. But one day he stepped forward to play his guitar and out of his amplifier came a radio signal. So I looked into the copper cable and found it's made of hundreds of tiny hair-like copper strands. These strands break over time and cause interference in the cable, till eventually the whole thing acts as a giant radio tuner. The obvious solution to me was to not use copper wire, but to use an optical fibre. But all optical fibre systems these days are digital, so I developed my own analogue optical guitar cable. We've had rave reviews from everybody that's used our light lead, including Mike Chapman, and Rick Simpson, who is Coldplay's producer, and he has just finished recording Coldplay's Grammy award-winning album, Head Full of Dreams, where he used the light lead on their guitars. Do any of the dragons play guitar? Um, would you like to try? Okay, <laughs> come on. I don't play guitar, guitar at all, but I Yay. guess I guess I'm going to be the. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. It doesn't matter. Just anything. Strum anything. Strum it. Yeah. I wish I had learned. Right. Amazing. Let's put this over your over your <laughs> shoulder. Switch the amp on. Got it. Fantastic. Born rock star. <laughs> right. Right. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. Yes. Mike Chapman. Mike Chapman. Mike Chapman. Of course. Uh, Mike is a personal friend of mine. Wow. I saw him last week, actually. Um, so tell me about your background, David. Uh, <laughs> well, I've, as I said, I've worked with Daniel for 20, 20 years. years. I've always been um, an audio engineer. My background is also music. Um, I'm the lead singer. <laughs> I have been for 16 years for um, a song that was number one in 1993 called uh, The Key, The Secret, Urban Cookie Collective. So, How like, does it go? I got the key. I got the secret. Wow. Do you remember that? Okay. That's well, so no, to be fair, I've been doing it 16 years, and the original singer was called Diane Charmaine. Mm. And when she left, I took over, and That's awesome. I've had the blast, you know. But I, I've seen, you know, uh, microphone cables. There's a faulty cable, and and if we can implement our technology into devices, you won't get that problem with faulty cables anymore. It would literally be plug in. They don't break. What you're saying is your product lasts not just long, it just lasts a lifetime, over above a copper product. 
yes. Pro products yeah. do go wrong. So if you think about that from a business perspective, yeah. what does that tell you about your product? Because if your product is so good that you buy it once, yeah. you're not going to get any repeat business. Have you thought about that? I've Absolutely, worked, yeah. I've worked on stages um, most of my life, and the amount of times I've put an amp down on a copper cable and severed it. I mean, accidents happen, cables break. So you can still break this cable You can still it. cut it in you half. You can cut it in half. Yeah. I know nothing about this, but if you do sell it, I'm worried that you've got no repeat business. The entrepreneurs are certainly displaying some stage presence. But Peter Jones has uncovered a potential flaw in one of their product's biggest selling points. And Deborah Meadham wants to know whether their invention has struck a chord with industry insiders. The big guys, are they aware of you? You know, the they current are. operators? They are aware of us. We went to one of the high-end cable companies and I said, would you like to test it against your high-end cables? And so they plugged in their top of the range. I think it was like a 10-foot cable. And then they plugged in the light lead and there was no difference. And ours was a 30-foot cable. And he said to me, he goes, I don't know why anyone hasn't done this before. And I said, nor do I. So, so, but what, so, but what happened next? You know, what I'd have then expected is them to say, look, we need to talk. Basically, we've had two working prototypes. Like, Fender wanted to take it away for two months. If it gets lost, if it gets broken, we're down to one. We, yeah. we haven't had the money. We've just had the passion and the belief. I mean, what I'm trying to work out is, is if this is a great idea <laughs> or a great business. Right. And, and there's a massive difference between the two. It strikes me that the single most useful bit of marketing that you could do is to get this cable into the hands of the top guitarists mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. Well, what would it cost you to produce 200 of these cables? Our minimum cable order is 10 kilometres, which would cost 15,000. That is That's the cheapest it. way of buying the cable, otherwise the cable becomes expensive Very to purchase. buy in short runs. It doesn't matter if prototypes are more expensive. What matters is having 200 of these things to get into the hands of guitarists. Absolutely. Um, and you could do that. You don't need to buy 10 kilometres to do that. What matters is that you get them in the hands of people whose judgment is unquestioned. Oh, absolutely. We've used our prototypes to get it into the hands of, you know, Coldplay have used our prototype on their new album. But you've only got two. We've got just two. I know, it's yeah, ironic. Then, make, then, <laughs> then, for God's sake, make a hundred of them mm. and get more prototypes in the hands of more people. Everything else will follow from that. Now, it also strikes me that you're probably in a better position to do that yep. um, than I am, um, because I, I don't have a whole load of the world's top guitarists on speed dial. So, I, I'm, I'm out. One dragon down as Nick Jenkins offers advice but pulls the plug on a deal. Now, Sarah Willingham wants more information about that big celebrity endorsement. You're sort of hanging your hat on the Coldplay thing, which I think is great. They've obviously used it and thought it was really, really good. But what happened after that? So they're using your prototype, which they've then given back to you, no, I assume. No, they've still got it. They've still got it. So you've only got one prototype we've got, now. No, no, we've had three. Now we've got two. But, you know, we've got Mike Chapman, and Mike Chapman has basically said there's not, not a guitar player out there that won't want one of these. Yeah, but the, the point is, yes, you might have got people to use them, and yes, they've said that's great, but if it was really great, they're like, you're not having this back. Mm. You're going to have to go out and make another one, or I'm putting in an order for 100 of these, because we're just about to do a round-the-world tour, yeah. and I need these cables in my life. Now, that hasn't happened, has it? So I'm afraid I'm out. This isn't my area of expertise. No. Um, it, the closest I ever came to was my years of bingo calling. Oh. You know, and, but oddly enough, our biggest issue was blinking microphone leads that were Thank constantly, you. Yeah. you know, awesome. you, you, you'd be in the middle of your busiest time and suddenly your micro leads crackling, mic yeah. microphone leads crackling up. So I actually, oddly, I know it, you know, completely Thank separate, you. but I get the problem. But you've got a lot of people out there with a lot of money who love your product. There could not be a stronger statement to say that we've got this amazing thing. How about you invest in our business? Absolutely. That would be my first port of call. Yeah. I would have sent it out there and I'd have said, how about we change the industry together? Because they've got a lot of money.
It sounds to me like you've got something, but I'm not the best person to judge whether or not that, you know, but I won't be investing. Right. Okay. I'm out. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. Is he prepared to take a punt and throw the passionate entrepreneurs the cash lifeline they so desperately need? Am I the last one? You're the, You're last, the last dragon. One. The last Tuka. dragon. Oh, you've got so much energy, so much enthusiasm. Oh. Oh. Let me ask you a question. Could you afford to make 100 of these yourselves? No. You can't? No. And, and the thing is, as well, it's manufacturing it. It's like well, a whole new world for I me. Know. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, this is my offer. Bless your heart, Tuka. I will give you the 70,000. For 35% of the business. Do you know what? We will do that. We'll do it. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Thank you so much. OK. Thank you very well much. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. A deal, but with a hefty price tag. 15% more than the entrepreneurs were looking to give away. But in return, they get the key and the secret to success in the form of a wealthy business partner. So blessed. <laughs> She's great. Wow. Is that good? That was a bit crazy, wasn't it? That was a, that was a roller real, coaster. It was a real emotion. Bless his heart. Yeah, and bless Tuka for giving us a chance, because that's what we need, is a chance. Yeah.